from the dead. Hey everybody, Repug and That German Guy bringing you another how-to episode of Dark and Light today. We're going to go ahead and walk you through some of the new things that came out in the latest patch, so that way if you guys haven't done it yet or don't quite know what to do, hopefully we can shed a little light on the myth and mythology of it all. Exactly. So, yeah, a lot of things in this game are very hard to figure out how to use or how you even do anything with it. And uh, there's not really any explanation whatsoever. And I, I, I know they want people to discover, but sometimes it's a little bit difficult. So we're mm -hmm. here to help you. Yeah, definitely. And if you go ahead and open up your inventory and go to knowledge, there's a couple of new things. So you'll notice under survival, at the very bottom next to the hang glider, there is now an advanced mortar and pestle. I did see that earlier. It's yep. probably at the top of this for you, if you don't have it unlocked. Yeah, I don't have it unlocked yet. Under melee crafting, we have the frost blade and the skull cracker. Mm-hmm. Under uh, ranged, we've got the force bow. Offhand, there's no changes. Armor crafting, nothing new. Tailoring, there is the frost armor set. Cooking has exploded into yeah. a ton oh of stuff God. starting out with vanilla tea and bread then there's mushroom soup dried apples uh fruit pie crispy steak bone soup lotus tea mandrake soup assorted sandwich which i'm pretty sure is a pizza <laughs> um, and spicy bacon so like, there's actual stuff to cook now. There's yeah, like a good I, variety, I, and they all have little bits and perks to them, which, you know, we'll take a look at in a minute. Mm -hmm. Under farming, nothing new. Uh, taming, there is two new feeds, the delicate herbivore and delicate carnivore feed. Riding, we now have a couple of new armored saddles. There's the vicious hyena saddle at rank 7 along with the albino deer saddle at rank 7, and at the top tier, rank 8, there is the savage cyclops saddle. Now, under adventuring, you'll notice there's also a new rank called forging. And with forging is basically how you can upgrade stuff. Get on that later, but you'll see it brings in several new items. Mm -hmm. Staffs hasn't been touched. Alchemy is pretty much the same. Light magic, we now have the new healing light staff head spell. Mm-hmm. Dark Magic, the Flame Missile has been moved from Flames to Dark Magic and has a new effect and look to it. Fire Magic, of course, lost the Flame Missile, mm -hmm. which is still strangely called Flame Missile. Um, <laughs> Air Magic hasn't seen anything. Uh, if you go to Thalm, we do have one new thing, and that is Royal Jelly, which has to do with the... We'll get back to that here as well. Enchanting has now lost the Goblin contract and has moved to its own Goblin Engineering, which you'll see is new there. But we have also gained the Soulbound Scroll, which allows you to soulbind items to yourself, so when you die, you spawn with them. In Goblin Engineering, we've got the Goblin Small Part, the, the old Goblin contract, and then the Goblin Ballista, which we will, of course, show off. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the buildings... There's been a few changes to the Elven Manor. The Castle of Hope steeple has been added back in and is now properly craftable once again. And then if you look at Dwarven, there's a huge increase of stuff. Pretty much all of the curved pieces. Yeah, so there's I noticed the arched that. archer walls and all this. And there's curved pieces for all the types of manors, but for some reason only the Dwarven ones made it in and nothing was even said about it. So it's really weird. But, yeah, those have popped in there. For a while, they were actually under the elven. Also kind of odd. I don't know what was going on there. And then lastly, if you go to house, there's one new item there, and there's the house medical plan. And there it is right there. So that's pretty much uh, what you can learn now. There are a few other things that have snuck in, but aren't usable yet, like the spyglass and the parachute. Those were accidentally put into the patch notes, but aren't quite ready 
yet. Mm -hmm. If you are an admin, you can spawn them in and check them out yourself if you want, but we won't cover them in this video to avoid. Yeah. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the graphics changes here. The cooking pot now looks like a proper cauldron. And yeah, it, it cooking. looks really cool. The larder box, however, is no longer a larder box and is now a meat rack. The one thing that's a little bit unfortunate is the meat racks almost take up two times the space as larder box. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit annoying. Uh, if you notice and you had yours all snug up against each other, they're kind of clipped into each other. So it didn't break them, thankfully, with the update, but uh, then again, it is a little annoying with trying to save space that they pretty much doubled it in size. I do have to say, though, the new image to it, really. Yeah, I really like how it looks. It's, I mean, it's much better than the square box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with steam coming it, out. It's, it's what you think of when you see a meat drying rack. Yeah, exactly. You'll also notice that the hook arrows now have a very fancy glowy blue line wrapped around them. Which is really cool. Yeah, so they that look... actually looks quite neat. Especially at night, it has a sweet glow to it. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it looks like the actual cable wrapped around the arrow, so it... God, those beehives are really loud when you get close to them. Yeah, yeah so there's bees. Uh, we showed that in, a, in our creature video, but to kind of explain the items of it, they make honey when you put flowers in there. Mm -hmm. And you can also put in royal jelly to activate them. And as long as there's royal jelly in there, the hives will not break down. It keeps the queen alive and she'll produce these little bees, which you see flying around. They almost look like little magical bees. And these things tear apart anyone who comes near them. So they can be a nice little early turret that you can just kind of find out in the wild. So it's mm -hmm. actually a neat aspect. Of course, they do have plenty of things in the future plan with some of the beehives. This is just kind of the basics are being added. Yeah. So let's, uh, you want to take a look at some of the foods? Yeah, let's do the foods. I'm always So hungry. unfortunately, they don't really give you a whole lot of stats on anything here. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you can go ahead and see all the different foods that are here. Flour is an in-between ingredient used to make a lot of the stuff. And, uh, you know, vanilla tea, ice cube and snow lotus seed into a mortar. Drink it to recover plenty of water and focus. So this actually gives you back quite a bit more focus than just eating flowers would, which is kind of nice. And the vanilla tea, which is an ingredient in the lotus tea, uh, gives a little bit less focus, but still better than flour. So that's kind of nice there. Mm-hmm. And then there's new soups. There's the mushroom soup, which will recover water and reduce uh, mana cost. So it, it doesn't reduce that much. It's kind of like a low buff. Mm -hmm. and there's the bone soup, which gives you water and reduces a little more. And then the mandrake, which gives you water and greatly reduces mana. So it's and, like a, uh, it, it's it's like a nice little tier system. Yeah, exactly. And then there's the assorted sandwich, which picture is a pizza. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, assorted sandwich. Uh, this game does have its hidden gems. Yeah. And uh, you eat it. It makes you very thirsty, but it gives you a lot of food and boosts your stamina back up. So that's kind of cool. And then same thing with the fruit pies. They will also give you some stamina and health which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then if we go ahead and pop in here, we've got bread. Bread is the lowest one. It will make you, all these make you thirsty, but it will give you a little bit more stamina and health than basic berries or something. For the new meats, there's the crispy steak and it, it, it can make you thirsty, but it does fill your food like tremendously. And then there's the spicy bacon, which is pretty much uh, probably the best at filling your hunger, I would say, out of everything now. Because everybody loves bacon. Oh yeah, of course. Of course, of course. But yeah, that kind of covers the food there, but it brings us to a few of kind of new items here. So there's now a common, uncommon, and rare version of pretty much every basic resort. So there's the uncommon grass and the rare grass. Then you've got uncommon meat, rare meat, uncommon flowers, 
rare flowers, and then yeah. there's the uncommon field mushroom and the rare field mushroom, which the basic one is, I believe, the white mushroom. Yeah. And you pretty much get these harvesting everything else as you normally would. There's just a low chance of getting them, and they're used in a lot of the new recipes. If you look into the knowledge base and kind of hover over a lot of the food, a lot of them do require some of this new stuff. It, now it, there is... Oh, you oh uh, yeah, it, it seems like they really tried to go for an MMO feel of it, try to give you something more extensive and more, like, tier-based, like I said earlier, yeah. to really kind of, like, spread out the actual game. Yeah, so, and these, these a lot of these aren't really implemented into a whole lot of things quite yet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, that's, it's basically putting down the groundwork for the game. Yeah. And then for the non-perishables, there's, of course, uncommon wood, rare wood, uncommon hide, rare hide, uncommon stone, rare stone, and then there's a new type called gems, and they're not used in anything yet. But when you harvest the ice crystals in the ice cave, there's a chance of getting them. And of course, they have, you know, there's gem, uncommon, and rare gem. And then right next to that is the frozen crystal ore. Now, Reaper, go ahead and grab that. Okay. Out and uh, eat it. And you'll see that will start to give you points in forging. Oh, yeah, that's really nice, man. So you actually have to go up to the ice cave and start harvesting these and eat some to unlock the basic first tier to forge. And that's how you get the forging stack going. So that's something that's actually very confusing for people because they're like, wait, how do I start forging if I can't make the forge? Yep. And right and there, I just unlocked you it. consume some crystal. Uh, the idea behind it is you're not really eating the crystal. You're researching it, more or less. Mm -hmm. it's, just, <laughs> it's You're clicking use. So, yeah, and you know, it's doing the eating animation. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're eating it. You learn mm -hmm. by tasting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, as we showed the boss in the last video, there's all these drops from him. There's the prong, the tendon, the sole, his key, the paw, tibia, ankle bone, and spine. Mm -hmm. So those are all things he has a chance of dropping. He at least drops one of each. I don't think he ever drops more than one toolbox key. Yeah. And yeah. he also can drop some crystal. Now, my understanding with the spells, which, oops, that's wrong box. We look right here real quick. There's the advanced magical extraction staff head. And he's supposed to drop that, but I, there's, it's a bit of a bug where he doesn't always, but basically equip it to your staff and cast it, and it should teleport you back to the beginning of the cave. And that's how you mm -hmm. get out after the boss. Yeah, well, we were trying to figure that out for quite yeah, a bit. but it, it's not... <laughs> it doesn't always give it to you, or at least in our experience. So that's a little bit annoying there. But there are a couple new spells as well. There's the Healing Light go ahead and toss that on and this is a uh, heal for your team so you pull out your staff and you cast it onto one of your members now it only gives five hp and it, it's really weak sauce i don't it's like it's five at a time and it does drain your mana quite a bit yeah it, dra it drains mana quite a bit and i feel like i don't know it's just not quite as impressive especially for the cost of it like, if you go over to Knowledge and we go to Light Magic, I mean, the cost isn't that bad, but you still have to grow crops for it. And, you know, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. It just doesn't seem as efficient as you would hope it for the game. And then, of course, there's the Soulbound Scrolls, which I mentioned earlier. And if you go ahead and take one of those, you can drag it and you'll see things turn green. And that means you can bind that item to you. So you go ahead and drag it over, and now that item is bound to you. So if you die, you'll respawn with it on you. Which is extremely nice. Yes. They are very expensive, however. They cost... Let's see, what was it? Under? Enchanting. Yeah, enchanting. I mean, it, I they're not that bad, honestly. I mean, it's one chaos. Yeah, I mean, 
compared like the spell was actually a lot more before. Compared to how much it costs to buy them from the NPC, compared to yeah. crafting, Making I yourself. think crafting honestly is a lot cheaper. Yeah, <laughs> crafting is definitely a lot cheaper. Uh, there's also the new Rune of Restoration 2, which is a little bit better, but not a whole lot better than the Rune of Restoration. And, uh, of course, there's the Flame Missile changes, so I'm going to equip one here and show how it looks now. And you can actually hold... Oops. You hold down the right mouse button, and it targets. Once it turns green, you release, and it's a seeking spell, basically. And it's supposed to look like a skull kind of flying out, but really it just kind of looks like a purple poof. Mine broke. More or less. Oh, it is hard to hit something while it's circling you. There you go. You got him. But yeah, so that's the new flame uh, missile and how it looks. I think they should call it, like, dark missile like, instead. Homing it's, magical missile. Since it is dark missile. magic and no longer flame. Yeah. Dark Missile sounds pretty awesome, honestly. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. But, yeah, that covers it for the spells. Uh, you want to go ahead and check out the new weapons? Yeah, dude, let's tear them up. I put one of each in there for us. Okay. Now, you'll see the we showed how to go ahead and craft these, and it's with all the parts from the boss and in the boss's cave. So you want to go ahead and check out that video on my channel mm -hmm. and see what it is. And that's how you make these guys. And uh, as stated, you can use this hammer, the... Was it the Skull Crusher? What's it called? Uh, yeah, Skull Crusher, I believe. Skull Cracker. So, skull Cracker, yeah. You can use the Skull Cracker off the back of the Vicious Hyena, which is awesome. And this thing, just it it's pretty sweet. All of the ice weapons do a, like, slowdown. So this is kind of like a little bit of an AoE for a slowdown on creatures, which is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. but it kind of has like a basic whap. <laughs> yeah. It's just like wonk. Wonk. It's pretty funny. I, I actually yeah. like it. Yeah, it looks really cool, but it does kind of have like a Batman old TV show feel to it. Like right. something you'd think the Joker would have or Harley Quinn. <laughs> exactly. And the Frost Sword can be held with a shield and it's got your basic slice attack and I believe if you don't have a shield equipped, it has a special. Let's see. Yes. Yeah, it has a lunge. Mm -hmm. So pretty much like the other sword. Nothing but it does easy. look really cool. It looks awesome and, of course, does a slowing effect. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we've got the force bow, which we should probably grab some arrows out of here. And this thing is just... It, it's really epic looking. Oops. Uh oh what I whistle? <laughs> That's a little scary. Uh, and it doesn't... I feel like the arrows don't really go any further, really. But it's yeah. awesome looking. And it can be used on the back of the new albino deer. It's got this sweet ice effect, and then there's like crazy feathers coming off of it. And it's just really well modeled. I think they did a really good job at it. Yeah, I think it looks really and cool. It's nice to have a new bow that isn't a crossbow. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly I mean, like bows better than crossbows special. in games anyways. Yeah. Crossbows are too slow. Definitely way too slow. But, yeah, that covers the new weapons there. Why don't we go ahead and check out the new armors? So, of course, we showed them more in depth in our other video, but there's the albino deer saddle, which is an armored saddle. Mm -hmm. The Vicious Hyena Armored Saddle and the Savage Cyclops Armored Saddles. But there is an armor for us. So I'm going to go ahead and start equipping it up. Yep, putting mine on right now. Get ready and to be frosty, it is gentlemen. The frost armor. Now, for some reason, on female characters, the chest piece is not textured. <laughs> Yeah. So, very weird. But, as you can see on Rebug, it is textured just fine. And is just really cool looking. And it has a bit of that Skyrim feel to it, which is, is awesome. Yeah. yeah I love yeah, I how love this that. looks. 
and you kind of you just look like an ice ghost or element. It's mm -hmm. it's really cool. Looking. And the stats aren't too bad for it either. Um, it's just above. Let's see. Do I have any common pieces, or do these all end up being rare? We kind of just randomly spawn them in. Yeah. Yeah, so. mine are all epic and rare. Yeah. But it's a little bit better than the uh, what's below mithril. Forgetting copper. Copper, yeah, copper. Yeah, it's between copper and mithril, basically. So mm -hmm. it's pretty sweet, but it has amazing cold resistance. So it it makes once you get this made, you can basically do the cave a lot easier, and it's forgeable, meaning it can be upgraded. Mm -hmm. So that is very important. Next up, we've got the house medical flag. And basically, just when you're in battle, you go ahead and pop one of these suckers down, and it creates a healing aura. So, I highly recommend taking these with you while you're battling the boss. These things are super helpful. And they stack with normal healing spells, but not with each other. So you can't put down like 20 and get like 20 times. Of course. They did think about that ahead of time. Yeah, that was a good... But, but I figure we go ahead and take a look at the last few items. There's so much stuff to cover. Here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this stuff. Okay. I left half of the essence, a contract, and uh, one of each thing in there for you. Roger that, sir. So this aura is a little bit annoying now. Uh, can't re pick it up either. It's just kind of it's there until it's done. But the little mortar and pestle is actually, like I said, very little. <laughs> it's a tiny little guy. Look at it. Yeah, I like how that I looks. It could be something huge, but I'm kind of glad it's not. Because it just it doesn't take up a ton of space. And yep. we all know with crafting areas, space is very Yeah, and I mean, you can here, fit... as you can see, you can make the teas and the flour. You cannot do that in a regular mortar. Mm -hmm. It does actually seem to uh, grind them down faster, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's much faster. And then our next beauty here, which I actually love the detail on it, is the refining. This thing is awesome. But, once again, there's no tool tips to tell you how to use it. I shoved wood in there, I shoved charcoal, I tried it's the everything. Well, ends up it runs on flame essence. Oh, that no makes figure. sense. So fire essence is what you need in there. Once that's there, you can light it on and it gets this awesome effect of like this blue superheated matte. In here is where you can smell any normal ingots, but then you can make the new refined ingots. So there's the refined obsidian, which is five iron ingots, ten silica powder, and five dark stone sand. There's the refined metal alloy, which costs you two square casts. And there is the square cast, which costs you three copper ingots, three mithril ingots, and five light stone sand. And the purpose of these ingots are to be crafted with the new items as well mm -hmm. as used in upgrading the new item in the forge. Yeah. Now if we take a look in here, I got some of I got a little bit of each ingot. Uh, we also have the different herbivore feeds if you want to see them. And then we've got the goblin small part. So go ahead and grab those goblin small parts and go ahead and eat them again. Okay, let me get out of the green light. Let's see, where did they go? There they are. Using them now. And once again, as you can see... It gives you goblin engineering. And then bam, goblin engineering rank one reached. And to get them, you basically just kill goblins, and there's a chance of them to drop. So it's nice and simple there. Mm -hmm. But what's the whole purpose of that? Well, it is the Goblin Ballista. 
I'm gonna plop one down right here. I think you have one as well. Uh, let's see. Oh no, I didn't grab it out yet. Let me grab it. Now, unlike the bows and the force bow and so forth, the goblin ballista is considered primitive or goblins aren't good at magic, whatever you want to look at it as. So it can only use stone arrow. Cannot use any of the magical imbued arrows. With that, if you want to do magical defenses, well, your best thing is going to be using the spell tower instead. So once you pump some arrows up in this guy, the next thing you want to do is stick a goblin contract in it. Like Once so. that goblin contract is in, you give it a second, and boom, you got a little operator now. And there you go, guys. And this thing's actually pretty good at knocking stuff out. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and... Let's see, what should we spawn? Let's give him a couple of... What do you think? How about a Bargash? Uh, Bargash would work. Bargash is what you're going to commonly see running around your base anyways. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And At least I... over here. Let me do this really quick. Okay, that did not work. There we go. Let there be light. You know what's really weird? At certain angles, right, your armor has texture. Oh, really? Yeah, like, right now, your armor has texture. Oh, yeah, that popped for me, too, for a second. That was weird. No oh. texture. Texture? No texture. Here we go. Get him! Oh, there he goes. Look at him go. They gave it a really cool animation. You could actually see, like, you know, the actual, uh... Him getting lurched back every time it fires. Yeah, yeah, the recoil. Mm hmm. He keeps with it pretty good. And I like that you watch him operate the controls. Like, they, they did a really good job. Yeah, it. it's not a simple thing of, like, you know, just like arrows start shooting out of it. It's, like, fully animated. It's really cool. Exactly. Exactly. Well, uh, that pretty much covers all the items except for the new forge. And for the forge, you have to find a special point of interest for it. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do is going to uh, go ahead and pause. We're going to find one and uh, show you the forge. All right. Be right back, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, repugging that German guy back. And we have officially have a ley line sighting. Yeah, so this is what the kind of looks like from above. So you see it's kind of like a blue mess with a weird rock thing kind of going on. Mm -hmm. Also, whenever I ride the Nidhogg, my armor looks normal. So that's it. All right, uh, you just you just teabagged me in the water. <laughs> I can't land. Uh, it's water. That's why it's registering as water. Uh... Uh, yeah, try to land there. No. Uh, just jump off. And Bye. let him land on his own. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, once you find this, you attach the forge. But is this one not active? Uh, There's no ground snap point. Yeah, no ground snap point. Look at the durability. I think it's been alive or on for a while. I don't think it's active oh, anymore. Oh, yeah, this one's almost dead. Yeah, so this doesn't have enough durability to do it. Okay, so, so uh, we'll go ahead and try to find one that does. All right, well, this is at least what they look like, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. All right, so we'll be right back again. Flying around for about four hours. We finally found an active one. We we're trying to get the area clear, so that way we could go ahead and get the forge down and show you guys what the next step of the process is. Alright, Durbin, land! <sighs> Tell me when you want me to place it. Alright, have... let's do Oh, no! Dang it! Alright, well, he'll do... he's doing his thing. Alright, place that! Placed! Mm, there it is! Alright! Alright, so you activate this dingle bop, 
and then you put a uh, a shoop of loop uh, in there. Uh, right now, apparently, it's kind of buggy on showing the proper stats with weapons. So we were told by the devs, go ahead and show armor it only on armor. So you hit transfer, got that, and then um, I guess put in the uh, obsidian. I guess putting it. It's not letting me transfer it. You click the button. Yeah, I'm clicking transfer. Transfer. Try the other thing. It's there, there it did go. that one. Okay, so that was the uh, refined metal aloe. There you go. And then there, there should be a go button, I guess. Active? Yeah, active. And boom. Oh, there it is. Whoa. Oh, I... Bam. Yeah, there, um, look into that. They're not, they're not really hitting the forge. <laughs> Well, it's kind of. If it was... Barely. Barely. I think it's supposed to be like, you know, like a sword coming off the side, like he's hammering a sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, I think it's supposed to be a she. Uh, yeah, it's a she. It's a she. There's, there's, there's a chest. Yeah, there's the proper word. As you'll see, the flame fills up. And this is dependent on the quality. So see how these are legendary? And we're using, like, I guess the highest refined, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, yeah, because this one requires the other refined ones to make. So this is the highest refined. So this should give us the highest completion with the least amount of impurity. So you, you want less impurity and you want it to complete faster. Mm -hmm. and it completes faster if you put in a better metal so refined metal alloy, I think, is the best. And then there's the what's the other one called that you have in there? Oh, uh, something. We also have refined square cast and square then, cast. Yeah, yeah. refined so obsidian square block. Cast is below that, and then above it, there's going to be other ones as well that they're going to be mm -hmm. implemented. I know gold is one, but uh, I, I'm not sure what else. Is. So we should see here, all right, 2% progress and 0% impurity. So you can see that's going good. Yeah, so think of it almost and like a taming thing. That, like impurities is going to be uh, your wilder or wilderness. your wilderness, you know. Mm -hmm. And basically, yeah, the faster it's done, the better and the higher stats you'll get. And it, it, it assigns a random stat. You can't control what it is. So it might add, uh, you know, heat resistance or uh, HP bonus mm -hmm. or healing power or, you know, it, it could be anything like that. Yeah. Now, it's a tricky system, though. Like, I could tell you this. Like, definitely try to find a group of people uh, once again to go do this. Uh, so you guys can all hit out the points. These things are all over the map. In, and I honestly think this one's going to lose its durability before it finishes the weapon. Yeah, and if it loses, if the ley line loses durability before it finishes, what happens next, German? Um, well, in early stages, you lose everything. Mm -hmm. But I, I think now it just rejects it. I, yeah. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I say we kind of sit around and see what happens. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Oh. Oh. oh! oh! Okay, guys, so um, that's what happens if you're standing next to the forge and the durability goes out. <laughs> oh my god, that scared the crap out of me. The devs um, did I, not mention... I believe I claimed an altar out that way. Soul node, let's see. Yeah, I did. Uh -huh. Estelle, soul node. Estelle Sono? Okay. I see two Estelle Sono. There's one closer to your death marker. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Wow, guys. So, um, be right back. We're going to go claim our stuff and then we'll uh, talk a little bit further. Alright, guys. So, as you saw what happened, um, that's what happens when the durability runs out of the uh, forge. A little bit of lag. I'm yep, you lose in. all progress, and uh, anything that's too close to it. I and think it pretty much blows up in this radius here, I would say. Yeah, like, that was a big explosion, what I 
actually saw. Yeah, we got lucky with the Nidhogg being right here, I think. He was just barely out of its range. Which scared the crap out of me because I was actually staring at the durability. Or, yeah, yeah, the inventory. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, German just goes, oh, it's about to, or the durability is about to go out. And then right when I came out of it, there was an explosion. Yep. <laughs> so, so, food for thought. Remember, when you guys find one, make sure take more than what you think it would be to actually upgrade your item. You Once you start, you cannot add more to it or why or or why or material wise so make sure to bring enough make sure there's plenty of durability on the ley line and keep track of it keep an eye out if it looks like it's getting low get the heck out of there yeah i would say if it isn't at least in the um what would you say uh, I'd, I'd i'd say, say four digits yeah four five digits, digits five digits if it's not at least in the five digits it's probably not going to complete one weapon either. Yeah, five dip it, or five digits definitely. Um, that was going about two percent per metal ore, and it was taking about say a minute and a half, two and a half minutes per actual two uh, percent. So you're yeah. looking at a lengthy process, um, and as you can see, it can be quite dangerous. <laughs> yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. So, well, I think that pretty much covers it, guys. Uh, that's all the new stuff and kind of basically how to use it. Mm -hmm. I hope this helped. If so, be sure to sub and click that bell notification so you can see our next upcoming tutorials. Mm -hmm. And until the next time, guys, this is Repug and that German guy hitting the pause button. And we will see you in the next. See you guys later. Back, back, back from the dead.